Hey guys, welcome to another Anime Kingdom discussion and review. This one is on episode 11 of Kantai Collection and oh my gosh, this episode was just... This is episode 11, which means there's only one more episode next coming up. That's like, since there's only 12 episodes in the season. And this episode was literally, it was pretty much mostly a build up to the next episode. But wow, like this, the whole beginning has Akagi kind of having a... Like, she's been having these dreams, kind of like premonitions, if you will, maybe, of what's going to happen at the mission and everything's not going good. And even at the end, you know, Akagi's like, I'm sorry, please scuttle me. And that's actually, this is what happened in Midway. You know, Akagi was, um, the ship was being, this is like really historical. It was being um, pretty much destroyed and they ended up scuttling it which means they destroyed it themselves so it wouldn't get into enemy hands and i was just um I, I was just like oh wow what the heck but of course that was a dream and she later in this episode they show everyone they have nagato pretty much telling them the plan akagi goes in and changes everything up a little because everything was planned with certain people going but she goes in to try i'm guessing to try and change it she wants to change it well, her and Nagato feel like it's kind of fate, like they're uh, like some type of force is pushing them to this kind of thing. Like Nagato knew all along it was, you know, um, they should go to this base even before everything, you know, that they knew for sure. She knew like for sure herself, you know. Um, but pretty much they form the groups, um, and K Kitakami is not with Oi, which is pretty dang weird considering they're such a you know they have to be together to be you know it's like a really good combo obviously you know of course you know Fubuki is still there being Akagi's escort and I could talk about the whole you know beginning half of this episode is pretty much everyone getting ready for this and Akagi there's Akagi and Fubuki moment they're all talking and Fubu how Fubuki is happy about you know coming here and meet everyone and she like wanted to be just like everyone here and you know Akagi you can see she's really serious about everything that's going on it's not her normal you know kind of playful eating on the like eating a whole bunch of food on the side kind of thing she's like dead serious like she's ready for this she's she plans to pretty much change fate what you know change her destiny as what her dreams or premonitions if you will are saying and pretty much they go on this mi on the mission they all go out they are kind of they're split into two fleets one's kind of a decoy thing so it's not really as important about them because they're going a different way except for the fact that um, they did have a mission uh, something to open up when they get there which is mission order so maybe it'll be to meet up later but the main force goes to um, plan to meet up with Yamato Yamato is finally being released to her first mission and during that time Yamato is going out there is this girl on the cliff. I don't know who that is. If you guys know, maybe, no, don't tell me. I don't want to be spoiled, but I'm not too sure who that is right now. But after that, it seemed like the Abyssals knew that this is happening. So that person might be a traitor. I'm not too sure who it is, but I'm pretty sure that's a traitor. And the another thing that makes it even more obvious that's a traitor is that they end up waiting at the spot where they're supposed to wait for every Yamato and the rest of the main force, and no one comes. Yamato is not there, the rest of them are not there, so they have to try and, you know, make a, new, a decision, and they end up, Akagi's, you can tell, like, throughout this whole episode, I do like it because it seems more of a tactical, strategic level with her really focusing on, like, what should you do? There's this kind of things going on, this kind of stuff, this may happen, but this may happen. She's really trying to change you know what happened in her dream and ends up leaving Fubuki and Kongo to wait for Yamato then and even later on Fubuki says she you know she has a feeling that something's going wrong like just kind of just like back in the um, other mission she had that same feeling and during this time the rest of the group goes up ahead and they find out that there is a, a airfield princess so if they they have to, you know, sneak attack to take that out so it won't, when the main force arrives, it won't get destroyed by her. So they go sneak attack and are able to really damage her. But as they're doing this and as they're sending out the next wave, 
trouble arrives. All of a sudden, there's a, hu a fleet behind them, and you know the carrier, the one with the eye gone, and all of a sudden, a whole bunch of ships coming down. They're getting hit from all sides. There's even that part where Kitakami was like, um, "Oi, get to get the um, left flank or left or right flank." I don't know what she said. And then she's like, "Oh yeah, she's not there." And all of a sudden, boosh, boosh, and everyone just getting hit, and it's just Akagi is kind of like, "Oh my gosh, she, you know, she tried everything to get this to stop to happen, you know." And even her bowl gets broken, so she pretty much can't send out any more ships. And at the very ending, all of a sudden, here comes a bomber about to hit, uh, dropping a bomb about to hit Akagi, and that was pretty much the end of that was the end of the episode, and it was like a huge cliffhanger. Of course, the next episode is the last episode, so that's why this episode, the beginning half and even the ending was mostly a build-up to the next episode, but oh my gosh, I'm wondering what they're going to do. Is this going to be like how, you know, obviously it's not really his history history because it's Abyssal, is not U.S. ships kind of thing, but is this really going to go in the historic, historical route where Akagi gets sunk? I don't know. It's, it's actually really crazy if like this episode is really like beginning half it made like us see like a little bit more of Akagi as a leader and as she's trying to change everything like her more serious side and you, I did enjoy the more strategic tactical view that everything was put into this and also the suspense of everything and the, these little things like oh my gosh what's gonna happen here what's gonna happen there and all of a sudden at the very end, this huge cliffhanger with Akagi, you know, I, I hope they don't sink her. I, I don't want this, his, you know, his, you know, history, how the historical point of view, how it's supposed to happen. I don't want that to happen. No, it's just, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. Like, I have a feeling um, that Fubuki, at right before everything was happening, she was saying um, when Terran Congo was there, she had a feeling that something was wrong, something was going to go wrong. So pretty much, like I think that she, at right when she, you know, Kagi's about to get hit, I'm pretty sure I think that Fubuki's gonna save her. Kongo and Fubuki are gonna arrive, and maybe the rest of Yamato, Yamato, and the rest of the main force. Maybe I'm not too sure, but hopefully, because I really do not want to see Kagi get sunk. It would be honestly really sad. She's one of my, she's one of my favorite characters so far in this. Her and Kaga, and like, oh my gosh, I, I don't even know what to say. That's why I really enjoyed this episode. It really was a more emotional level episode. We've had some emotional ones before. Um, you can't really say much about the battle because it was pretty much just them getting destroyed. Maybe the next, I'm pretty sure the next episode is going to be more of a crazy battle battle scene if you're looking forward to that kind of thing. I think next episode will be really emotional, really a lot of action, and just like, I'm, I'm thinking it's going to be a really good episode because this is going to be the last one, so I'm... I'm wondering how they're gonna finish this. Are they gonna finish it with, you know, Kagi getting sunk or something like that? And all of a sudden, everyone's able to fight back, kind of thing. Or will she get saved and change her fate, change the destiny that was she saw her premonition and everything? I'm hoping it's the latter, obviously, and where she doesn't get destroyed, you know. But yeah, overall, I really enjoyed this episode. Really good episode, and cannot wait for the next one. That's all I gotta say about this episode, guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed this Anime Kingdom discussion and review. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. If there's anything I missed and you want to talk about, comment below as well. And until next time, guys, see ya.